Hi everyone and welcome to this quick video which is going to give you an overview of structural analysis for Revit. So I have a fairly simple model here and what we're going to do is try and perform a load takedown on this model using the uh, cloud based analysis tools. So first thing I'd like to uh, make sure you've got installed, if you click on your analyze ribbon inside Revit you can see here that you've, you probably will have the robot structural analysis uh, link if you have robot installed but you may not actually see the structural analysis tools actually shown on the far right of the ribbon. If you don't, you just need to simply go to your um, subscription centre. So in this case, I'm going to go to the Autodesk App Store. Okay, if I just go into here and we do a search for structural analysis, and you'll notice straight away that we can see the structural analysis toolkit uh, is free. So of course, you can just download that and then utilise that. Once that's installed, you'll see these tools here. Now before we go through the, the tools and what they actually do, it's a good idea to actually check the uh, configuration of our analytical model. So you can see here I have the analysis model shown. Um, I've added some loads in here, so I've got some live loads on the floor slab. I've got a wind load over here, although of course the load takedown is really only going to worry about uh, vertical loads, any other loads will be ignored. And also I've set up the fixity um, or the boundary conditions of my bars as well. So you can see in here I've set the, uh, in this case, this beams are pinned and pinned. Okay, And I've also got boundary conditions at the bottom of the structure here. Now it's quite important because if any of these um, elements aren't configured properly, then the analysis will fail. Um, one nice little check before you um, commit to analysis, a cloud-based analysis, is to just make sure that you've got connectivity within all your components. So for example, if I just draw a few random beams down the bottom here, we'll go back into our analytical model. What I'm going to do is go into visibility graphics and just switch on our analytical nodes. Now you notice here that it's now showing those nodes. Now there's obviously a disconnect between these two um, analytical beams here, but you know if that was a very small gap, it might be difficult to see. So what we can do is we can go to the filter option in here. We can add a filter. Um, in this case, I'm going to use unconnected analytical nodes, and I'm just going to colour these in red. So let's see what that looks like, and you can now see that this node is connected, these nodes are all unconnected, hence they're shown in red. So that's quite a nice little check prior to committing to an analysis. Okay, let's just clean those up. So now that we've got that done, the next thing we'll need to check is our loads. So if we go to the Analyze ribbon once again, and I go into my load combinations, you can just see in here that I've actually set up a load combination at the minute. So I've set up some loads in here and then the factors I want to um, add in. Um, serviceability I'm going to use here and the usage is going to be my load takedown. So um, that's quite useful to get set up as well prior to the analysis. Okay, so let's go ahead now and analyze this in the cloud. So we'll click on Analyze in Cloud. So Revit will go through a few um, pre-checks in here just to check that the model's um, up to scratch as it were. So it's now uploading that model. The beauty with the cloud-based analysis is once this is uploaded to the cloud, um, we can carry on working with Revit. Um, it, it frees up the processor to do more useful things. So in here now, uh, what we can do is we can set the type of analysis we're running on. Um, for the load takedown, I'm going to be running on uh, gravity at the minute. I can obviously um, give the analysis a name. So let's call this load takedown. Um, we can give a report a name as well and also decide whether we want a simple report or a status report. And the self weight of the structure is going to be uh, added to dead load one. This is going to cost two cloud credits, by the way. Um, let's get that going. And while that's going, we'll talk about cloud credits. If for any reason the analysis fails, then it won't take any cloud credits. You'll see that it, um, it doesn't deduct any credits from you. Um, most companies, in my experience, have quite a few cloud credits floating around. So, um, yeah, you know, you'll, you'll probably find you've got many hundreds of credits um, that you can use. So, this type of analysis is quite good for uh, preliminary design. You know, early what if analysis. Um, so, in this case, I might just be designing some foundations, and I just want to uh, get a, a good idea of the kind of loads um, on on the bottom of the columns there, so I can get on with modelling and designing my foundations. Okay, so let's now just check what's going on. 
So you can see here that um, this current analysis is up the top here. You can see that it, that's now completed. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so here we are. And you can see now that's the load takedown one in there. I can view the report if I want to. Um, what I'm going to do though is I'm going to actually show you the um, 3D structure viewer within this web page. So we'll click on that. You can now see it's downloading that model. So let's take a look at that. So here it is. Um, first thing we might want to do is for the dead load one, I'm actually going to show my um, point reactions. Now, out of the box by default, it's just showing me my, my um, worst case scenarios, my maximum and minimum. So what we can do in here is we can go through, um, let's get it to actually just show all of the um, point reactions at the bottom there, so you can now see all of these in here. Um, we can obviously do the same thing for um, loads on the bars if we wanted to and so on. So we get all of the uh, results shown in there. We can do that for the different load cases, so if I wanted to see the same thing for the live load, again I could do that. We can get it to show the tributary areas on the, the slab and so on. Yeah, we can hide beams. So it's, it's actually quite a quite a nice interactive usable tool. Now you may remember um, if I just close this down here, uh, let's go back into that again. So you may remember here we had the option of also sharing these results as well. So if I do share in here I can actually um, type in someone's email address and we can collaboratively look at those results which again can be quite nice. What I'm going to do now though is go straight back into Revit and I'm going to grab these results back. So if we go to our results manager you can now see that in fact you can see I've had a few goes of this and I've got a lot of out of date results now where I've been changing the model but this one is up to date so that's quite nice in itself to actually see the status of the analysis. What I'm going to do here is just go ahead and download those results. So what that's really doing when we say download is putting them off the cloud and it's going to store them inside the Revit database here. Um, we can directly go to explore in here or I can just use the results explorer up here to actually see what's going on. So if I go to model 7 now you can now see we're ready. Notice when I was viewing model 6 results they're actually out of date. So again that's, that's good to know. Okay so in here um, let's say that we wanted to see those reactions inside uh, Revit here for dead load 1. Again, I could just set that up. You can now see that we can access and view all of those results um, directly in here. Um, if I go to the results visibility in here, I can start to make changes to this. Um, so you see here, I've got vector results going in and there, but I can, you know, determine exactly how those results might look in Revit and so on. So that's really quite nice. Um, again, if I do the same for the member loads in here, um, let's go ahead and apply that. Again, you can see all of the information directly stored within Revit. So, quite useful, and as I say, it's pretty good for preliminary design. Okay, hope that was useful. Thanks very much.